This is Marjorie Taylor Greene. I'm sure most people already know who she is. Uh, she's done something really, really interesting recently. So I wanted to talk about it. She, oh, this is a complicated way to start. Let me just try to put it in basic terms. It's very, very simple to basically vacate a Speaker of the House and have a new vote for a new Speaker because of the rules set up by the Republicans who technically control the House of Representatives right now federally. It's super simple to do. Basically, anybody can bring it to a vote, can kick the current guy out and bring in a new guy or, or you know, vote on a new guy anyway. Um, the last time they did that, they it was Matt Gates. He was the one that kicked Kevin McCarthy out of the speaker role. And Marjorie Taylor Greene just filed papers to kick out the next Speaker of the House. It took them, oh my God, I don't know, what, what was it, like 20 days or like three weeks or something to finally get a guy in. And the guy that they got in after McCarthy is this guy right here, Mike Johnson. We're going to talk about him in a second. But Marjorie Taylor Greene filed the papers for real to vacate the speakership role and take a revote again like i i don't know what she's thinking i don't know how she thinks that this is going to benefit anybody or anything and truthfully mike johnson believes all the same garbage that she does he was exactly perfect what is she doing what is going on right now why is she doing this let's talk about it okay so this is a uh, an AP article on it. Speaker Mike Johnson faces threat of ouster from Republican Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene. Let me see. Yep. 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 Thank you. Yep. So Why did okay. you file a motion yes. to vacate? Uh, today I filed a motion to vacate after Speaker Johnson has betrayed our conference and broken our rules. Dude, he did what? How? Uh, we were promised promise regular order. Uh, that's what our conference had started out as uh, with rules and promises to the American people that we would bring regular order back to Congress. Dude, what the hell is she even talking about right now? Uh, Speaker Johnson has betrayed that by passing three CRs and then forcing us to pass uh, a, or to vote on a two part omnibus. The second one being today. Uh, this is a betrayal. An omnibus, if you're unfamiliar, like with politics or whatever, it's a bill that has like multiple things in it. Like um, a lot of the time people use omnibus bills to slip in stuff that doesn't belong there. Like they'll have a highway bill to repair, you know, interstate highways at a, a certain times. And it'll also contain aid for... Um, Israel or whatever, you know, that's an omnibus bill. I'm actually opposed to omnibus bills. I, in my opinion, bills should contain exactly what they contain and nothing like exactly what they're about and nothing more, but I don't know. I could be convinced otherwise. I just have to give it some thought, I guess. I do not wish to inflict pain on our conference. Too late. And to throw the, throw the house in chaos. Oh boy, <laughs> you didn't mean to do that? Oops, just picked a whole bouquet of oopsie daisies there, didn't you? Quick note before we continue, I want to let you know I just wrote a book. If you want to check it out, owenmorgan.com slash book. It's a book about my experiences within Jehovah's Witnesses. It's completely understandable if you know nothing about Jehovah's Witnesses. And if you're a Christian, it's a good reference to use for why Jehovah's Witnesses are wrong about their interpretation of the Bible. The last chapter of the book is 100 questions that I have for the governing body. I'm selling the last chapter separately as its own separate guide, if you guys want to get that too. So check it out, owenmorgan.com slash book. I'd appreciate that. But this is basically a warning, and it's time for us to go through, through the process, take our time, and find a new Speaker of the House that will stand with Republicans and our Republican majority instead of standing with the Democrats. Wow, Mike Johnson stands with the Democrats, huh? I think wow, man. So Marjorie Taylor Greene filed papers to vacate Mike Johnson. Who the hell is this Mike Johnson guy then? Let's talk about him. This video is actually from like very early on in his tenure as speaker. He's insane. He's a Christian nationalist. He believes the government should be run by Christians and only Christians. 
Nobody else. So Fox News Sunday, I guess, gets him on. This is from November 5th, 2023. He goes on Fox News to talk about his positions on things. He was pushed through pretty quickly, by the way. Like, nobody even expected him to become... No one ever even, like, thought that he was a candidate to be the Speaker of the House, and all of a sudden, boom, he's a candidate. Or, boom, he's the Speaker of the House. It was very sudden and and surprising. Anyway, listen to his position on some of these things. Uh, I want to talk about some social issues. You've got a lot of critics who say that you are wildly out of step with the American people. Let's talk abortion first. One of the... Oh, he is very out of step, yes. ...groups opposing you says this. He wants a total abortion ban with no exceptions. He supported bans that would not only criminalize abortion, but ban IVF treatments and common forms of birth control. That's true. That is true. And we're seeing that now. I mean, that's obvious now, right? Everybody knows that now. He's a Christian nationalist, and the Christian nationalist plan or agenda or whatever you want to call it is to ban... In vitro fertilization, IVF treatments help people who want to get pregnant have a baby who couldn't otherwise get pregnant because their body just, you know, it doesn't work for one reason or another. I think, what was it, Alabama, I think? The Alabama Supreme Court, the Chief Justice went on a QAnon TV show. I covered the whole thing with Johnny Enlow, talked about, All of it. It was nuts, dude. The whole thing is nuts. I think it was Alabama banned IVF. And uh, they want to ban common forms of birth control. Yeah, that's well known. That's well established. Like everybody knows they want to ban birth control. Is that that up for debate? Or does somebody like not know that? This is a uh, Trump candidate who a Trump endorsed candidate. She lost eventually. Uh, She was um, running in Michigan. But uh, yeah, this was from 2022. It was mid-May. She goes on this guy's uh, TV show to talk about her positions. Just listen. You're a faithful Catholic, meaning you believe everything the church teaches? Yes. Everything. Yes. Everything. (laughs) Yes. So you are... uh, 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 That's the candidate. You see that uh, the use of contraception is against uh, natural moral law. Yes. uh, Is destructive, a doorway to abortion, blah, blah, and all that. Like, what is he even, what? And everything else, you see the whole, everything going on with Roe, Mm -hmm. for example, right now. And all the, Uh, yeah, Roe v. Wade had just been overturned or was about to, was about to be. Mm -hmm. For example, right now, and all the left, you know, becoming completely uncorked, losing their minds. I mean, yeah, I'm not really happy about it, but okay. Corked, losing their minds. The question, you know, they're saying they're coming after your, your gay marriage next. They're coming after your birth control after that and everything else. Well, you know what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yes. yes. So we need to um, make a plain statement of fact, which is the reason why the West is great is because Western civilization's underpinning is Christianity. You- Holy Christ on a cracker, dude. These people need help. Seriously. Quick interjection, this won't take long. If you like what I do, I'd appreciate it if you watch the video to the end. YouTube bases video reach off of watch time, so watching even an extra minute makes the video go further. Liking and subscribing goes a long way too. Finally, it would be awesome if you guys checked out my Patreon. All links are in the description, of course. Okay, back to the video. So Tom Parker did an interview with a QAnoner, Johnny Enlow, and uh, we talked about it on stream, like, not that long ago. It's on my Owen Unfiltered YouTube channel if you want to watch it. We, we listen to the whole thing. And uh, Tom Parker here on the left, this is the chief justice of the Supreme Court of Alabama. He's the one that banned IVF treatments in Alabama. And he uh, explains how he legally discriminates against people to pad his staff with Christian nationalists and Christian nationalists only. The answer is complicated, but basically boils down to there was a guy named Blackstone, um, Blackwell, Blackstone. He was a philosopher that was active from like 1760 to 1780 or something like that. And he wrote about how he thought government should operate and so on and so forth. There doesn't seem to be any evidence to indicate that the Founding Fathers used any of his writings to write the Constitution. He's really very irrelevant to the United States. He was a UK 
or he was a British philosopher, a British lawyer or whatever. And he wrote about things in Britain, not the United States. So Tom Parker in this video, this big long interview he did with his QAnoner, he outlines how he discriminates legally. The way is basically he only picks staff members from schools who have a school about Blackwell. Or I'm sorry, he only picks from schools who have a class about this Blackwell guy. Normal law schools don't give a about Blackwell because he's completely irrelevant to anything. But Christian nationalist schools, they've chosen to create classes that talk about Blackwell and the things that he wrote down, basically. So he goes to the deans of these schools that teach classes on Blackwell or whatever, and he says to the dean, hey, can you give me some names of people? I don't even want to interview them. Just tell me who you think I should hire. And the deans pick the most conservative extremist nutcases and send them to this guy's staff. That's how they're doing their discrimination legally. But anyway, the point here is that all, all this stuff has been on the table for like a long time. Yeah, IVF treatments are like under attack right now. Yes, they banned them in Alabama. Yes, b certain uh, common forms of birth control are being targeted. Absolutely. I mean, these are all things that, uh, that, that Mike Johnson has voted against. So we know what Mike Johnson's positions are on these things. If he says no to any of this, if he says, no, I don't believe that, he's lying. He voted this way. Okay? Let's keep listening. The ban IVF treatments and common forms of birth control in the... By the way, that's a very Christian nationalist position. Like, no one else agrees with that except Christian nationalists, which make up a very small portion of the country. 15% max, I'd say. Maybe 20. Maybe 20. 80% of the country wants IVF available for people. You voted against access to contraception. Where are you on these issues? Is that an accurate assessment of where you are? Because that's not in step with the American people. No, it's not. No, Shannon, look, I'm, I'm pro-life. I've, I've said very clearly, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. I believe in the sanctity of every single human life. So I come to Congress with deep, personally held convictions. But guess what? So do my 434 other colleagues in the House. Sure, yeah, okay, great. You come to Congress with deeply held beliefs. Fine, all right. Those deeply held beliefs just so happen to be completely out of step with the American people. Nobody wants IVF banned, except for your crazy ass. Nobody wants contraception banned. What? Yeah, you have all of these deeply held beliefs that are completely contrary to what anybody else wants. And he's the Speaker of the House. Third in line to be president. This guy is right now with their deeply held convictions. But the process here is that you make law by consensus. And I've not brought forward any measure uh, to, to address any of those issues. Right now, our priorities are... F okay, you haven't brought those forward, but those are happening right now. All of those things are taking place in America, and he supports it. Running the government, handling these, these massive national security uh, priorities that we have in, in crises around the globe and, and taking care of changing and reforming how Congress works. That's what we're going to do. Listen, I, prior to uh, the modern time, I mean, until recently, actually, almost all of our nation's leaders openly acknowledged that they were also Bible-believing Christians. So, I mean, this is not... I mean, uh, is there anybody in Congress that doesn't acknowledge that they're bible believing christians what's the percentage i know we have ilhan omar she's in congress right and she's a muslim okay the religious composition of the 117th congress this is on pewresearch.org very trustworthy since i've been writing my book understanding jehovah's witnesses you can find it at owlmorgan.com book in the description by the way but since I was writing the book, I actually have an, like a, an extension, like a Chrome extension that lets me see how valid a source is, if it's trustworthy or if it's whatever, funny enough. Um, and it lets me get like an MLA format 
Like I can grab the uh, th the citation in MLA format with like the click of a button. Oh my God, it's so convenient. I love it. It's right here. This source is probably credible. I mean, I don't always trust it. I do my own vetting, but then I just, yeah, I have, I have it set to MLA nine, modern language, whatever. So just click to copy and I can paste it anywhere and boom, just like that. It's super convenient. Anyway, sorry, a little aside there. When it comes to religious affiliation, the 117th U.S. Congress looks similar to the previous Congress, but quite different from Americans overall. So here's what it looks like. Um, there are 538 representatives total, I believe. 538. And there are two senators per state. Yeah, two senators per state, which means 100 senators. So there are 438 congressmen, to, like House of Representatives members total, I believe. House has 435 members. Number representing each state is determined by population. So have they changed it then? I guess they've changed. I, I guess they gerrymandered and decreased the number of districts by three. Is that what happened? Because I remember when it was 438 anyway. Uh, so of those 435, I guess, 400 and... No, uh, okay, so I guess we're counting all of them. 535 members of Congress total, including senators. Of those 535, 468 are Christian. 88.1% are Christian. As opposed to 65% of U.S. adults. Next highest percentage is Jewish. There are 33 Jewish members of Congress, uh, Senate or House of Representatives, 33. And that makes up 6.2% of the population of Congress. They're Jews. Only 2% of the country is Jewish. Then we've got between one and three people who are Buddhist, Muslim, Hindu, Unitarian, Universalist, or unaffiliated, or other, or don't know or refused. 18 of them apparently don't know or refuse to answer, interestingly. So anyway, yeah, um, like basically everybody in Congress is Christian, a Bible-believing Christian, self-avowed, yes, I love Jesus, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what the hell this dude's even talking about right now. Until recently, actually, almost all of our nation's leaders openly acknowledged that they were also Bible-believing Christians. Uh, almost all? I mean, they still do that, except for the Jewish ones. I mean, this is not a, 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 something that should cause great unrest, okay? It's just that Washington, right now, what you're seeing, Washington and the Associated Press Corps are engaging with a leader who openly acknowledges faith and, and, and the, the foundational principles of our, our country. Okay, but I think this is... Okay, it's a little bit more than just openly acknowledging your faith. Slightly more, I would say. When you're saying things like you want to ban IVF, you want to ban abortion federally, you want to institute a Christian nationalist government, you believe that you're Moses. Yes, he said that. Well, you know, metaphorically, you are the Moses of the modern day. Yes, he said that, and I have it on video, and we, if we have time, I might even play it in a second. That's a little beyond just admitting that you like the Bible. It's a healthy discussion, but it, it doesn't affect how we run Congress. To be clear, though, have you voted against fertility treatments and access to contraception? Would you? I don't, I don't think so. I'm not sure what they're talking about. Uh, I, I really... Uh, really? I'm not sure what they're talking about. Don't know. I have no idea. Completely in the dark. Don't remember what I voted for. I have no moral convictions on this issue whatsoever. I have some on literally everything else. But this one issue, contraception and IVF, haven't thought about it. Know nothing about it. Haven't, haven't put any serious thought into it. Have no idea. I bet. Yeah. Dude has no clue how he feels about this thing. Speaker of the House has no idea what he thinks. Uh, I, I really don't remember any but, of those but measures, do you oppose anything i am personally pro-life yeah i'm personally pro-life that means he is opposed to ivf treatments and he's opposed to contraception no uh, just dead silence i love it i am personally pro-life yeah no no of course not i no that that's 
Hang on, I'm sorry. I did, let, let's see if we can understand what she said. What they're talking about. I, I really don't remember any but, of those. But measures, do you oppose anything? I am personally pro life, yeah. But do you oppose any? Oppose anything? I am personally pro life, yeah. Oh, but do you oppose IVF? Okay, that's what it is. Somebody, yeah, okay, thank you. I couldn't figure it out. I got the chat always comes to the rescue to help me out. Okay, so do you oppose IVF? That was her question. It's a direct yes or no. Do you oppose IVF? The answer is yes, he does. And the reason I say that is because that's a Christian nationalist position, as was made obvious by the Alabama Supreme Court and the chief justice on the Supreme Court, who is also a QAnoner, in addition to being a Christian nationalist. Yeah. No, no, of course not. No, he doesn't oppose IVF. Oh, I bet. This is just flat-out lie from him. No, no, of course not. I, no, that, that's uh, something that's blessed a lot of families who have, have uh, problems with fertility. Of course that's a great thing. Um, I would support that. But look. Well, the, here's the reason why IVF is controversial among these people. It shouldn't be, obviously. But people who are having trouble having a baby, they'll take an egg cell, just a single cell from the mother, and they'll take the sperm cell from the father, and um, I don't know, usually they take multiple eggs from the mother because it's like an invasive procedure. Take like five or ten or something. And they will um, put them in a Petri dish and, and like let, let them fertilize to turn into embryos. And then they freeze them instantly. So there is like no growth, no nothing. They're just, they're embryos. Boom. That's it. You implant one of them if you want to have a baby. Well, these people here believe, I mean, Mike Johnson and these other Christian nationalists, they believe that life begins the moment that the sperm cell enters the egg cell or whatever. And it's murder for IVF people to, like, dispose of embryos that were unused or whatever. Like, what? Are you kidding me? Get help, people. Thing. Um, I would support that. But look, again, these are not issues that are on the, the front of the agenda. And oh, no, they're not? Funny. Those things were just, I mean, that just happened in Alabama and is being discussed across the country. Not at the front of the agenda, huh? Listen to this dude call himself effectively Moses, the, the modern day Moses. And the Lord told me very clearly to prepare and be ready. Be ready for what? Okay, I don't know. We're coming to a Red Sea moment. What does that mean, Lord? Um, and then when the speaker's race happened and, and, and Kevin McCarthy, who's a... This is early December 2023, by the way. Your friend of mine was deposed, uh, vacated from the chair. Oh, wow. Well, this is what uh, the Lord may have been preparing us for. And so um, I, I was started praying more about that. And then the Lord began to wake me up uh, through this three-week process we're in in the middle of the night and and to speak to me and to write things down plans and and procedures and ideas on how we could pull the conference together now at the time i assumed the lord is going to choose a new moses and oh th thank you the lord lord you're gonna allow me to be Aaron to moses and so i i, I worked to get steve scalise uh, elected speaker that didn't happen and then jim jordan who's like another big brother of mine no that didn't happen and then tom emmer and you know all yeah he's just this, he's outlining what happened when they were trying to pick a speaker. Really, 13 people ran for the for the post. Um, and, and the Lord kept telling me to wait, wait, wait. So I waited, I waited. And then at the end, when it... I mean, the Lord wasn't telling you anything. If you, if you believe that the Lord was speaking to you, then start taking Seroquel. Start taking something that will stop the, the literal hallucinations from happening. You shouldn't be hearing somebody else's voice. That's not clinically mentally healthy the lord kept telling me to wait 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 so i waited i waited and then at the end when it came to the end the lord said now step forward me I, I'm, I'm supposed to be aaron no the lord said step forward so he turned himself into moses basically he's saying he was aaron but now the lord told him to be moses he is perfectly exactly in line with what Marjorie Taylor Greene and the other far-right extremist nutcase Republicans want. Perfectly in line with them in every way. Do whatever they want. And Marjorie Taylor Greene comes along and, like, files a motion to vacate him from the speakership? Why? 
There, she's up to something here, right? Why did she do that? She's she's facing like a lot of blowback from it too. By the way, this clip is this is Clay Higgins. It's from late March 2024. I consider Marjorie Taylor Greene to be my friend. She's still my friend, but she just made a big mistake. You know, trying to vacate Mike Johnson's insane totally oppose that listen mike is a very good man it begins every day from the no he's not a good man he's a scumbag right place he's deeply principled and he's like he's like a brother to me and to think that that one of our republican colleagues would 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 call for his ouster right now it's it's, it's really, it's abhorrent to me. And I oppose it. I stand with Mike Johnson. He is. It, it's confusing as hell to me. There's some political game being played here, but I don't know what it is yet. I like maybe we're going to need a little bit of time. Of course, Marjorie Taylor Greene claims that everybody loves her and everything is perfect. And, you know, they're so happy with her decision to try to oust Mike Johnson. When I left Washington, D.C. Uh, last night and flew out on a plane, I have received nothing but praise and thank yous. Nothing but praise and thank yous. Totally. I bet. Because America is fed up with this, Steve. No one agrees. Uh, no one disagrees with me. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. This is outrageous. And Speaker Johnson should have never done this to his Republican majority. Dude, what did he do to our Republican <laughs> conference? And he broke the 72 hour rule yeah. and should have never passed that. Dude, oh my God, dude. What is she even talking about right now? She just fabricated some rule that he violated to, you know, get him vet vacated as the Speaker of the House. Why? Dude, I I'm telling you, man, I love the chaos being like wrought by the Republican Party right now. I don't know what she's up to, what the plan is, why she did this or what. I don't know. I don't know. But I love everything about it, dude. Seriously. I love watching them eat themselves alive and enact plans that will inevitably fail miserably. It's phenomenal. Anyway, <laughs> I just love it to that. Tell me what you think about it in the comments. Keep doing what you're doing, Marjorie. Loving it. C create chaos. Uh, Matt Gates too. Create chaos, please. I'm begging you. Tell me what you think.